The cheapest way to melting metal when getting into jewellery making is getting one of these propylene torches. You can get them at any hardware store around the world. Uh, there'll be slightly different variations, but it's the same thing. It comes in two parts. The gas wheel itself, which is a cheap replacement, and then the nozzle, which you can buy separately and never have to replace. As I show here, it's just a screw on top. With a dial, it can change how much gas you want to release. And then the sparker to turn it on. So normally you just crack the gas, then you spark it and then turn it up to what heat you'd like. The gas bottle itself is about 15 Australian dollars and the head, which you can get multiple different types, but range from about $50 to $80. Once you have that, obviously you don't have to replace that. That's the only replaceable thing, which is quite inexpensive. I've got to replace this bottle, so I'll head to the hardware store and show you the pricing and the options that I have. It'll vary for you, but it is pretty universal. Got my new bottle. Now there is limitations with this setup though, as this only reaches a certain temperature, so it's only good for melting certain types of metals that are quite soft, like silver, and only a certain quantity, as if you're using too much, it blobs up and doesn't get the whole thing to a liquefied form. I'll show an example in comparing two different types of gas setups by showing the different temperatures of two. When I'm melting my metals, I use this block, which is a heat block, it's actually from an oven, a pizza oven, used to absorb heat, so you can get any sort of heat block like that, pizza oven uh, is a good example because it's a wide 400 by 400 block. I'll get this old crucible and turn this on and heat it up. Now the temperature gauge wasn't as helpful as I thought as it maxes out at about 500 degrees Celsius but the one thing it did show was how quick it got to that before it maxed out. For the first basic torch that took about 40 to 50 seconds. With the second torch set up with the oxygen, it took just under 30 seconds. And as you can see, the crucible as well on the second torch was much hotter with that molten base. That reached the higher temperature much quicker. It's hard to show on this temperature gauge because it maxes out around 500 degrees Celsius, but you could see in the crucible the heat rising much quicker, turning into a red sort of molten in the middle. Now this is just actual, uh, sorry, more, more a plumber's torch, a trade torch, so it's not actually made for jewellery making, but it's sort of the next step up from this um, without going to the next level being like a furnace or industrial sort of torch. I'll show you a little bit more about this gas torch setup. This is, it has the temperature gauge, the two tanks, the little stand, the lead and the actual torch tip itself. The lead the gauges and the torch comes in a kit and then you just buy the refills of both at your local hardware store. And if you're really getting serious, you've tried this out for a while and you want to melt more, a jewellery furnace is the way to go. It's much more pricey and it gets around $900, but I have ordered one and I'll make a future video about it. 
it melts at a more even temperature, a higher heat, and you can melt more metal. Thanks for watching. If you want some more tips on casting jewelry, here's a couple here. The video on the right is five basic tools to get started with jewelry making, and the one on the left is how to pack a sand cast mold simply.